tech is a super power what that means is that what you're going to be doing here for the next 4 years is basically learning a super power a super power which enables you to disrupt anything in the world in fact if you go and talk to anybody who is a leader in tech they will tell you that what is happening today is the same as what was happening back in 2000 back in 2000 the internet revolution happened and what that led to was there were a lot of really large companies like google facebook that were created in that in that era that era is repeating again because now you have this new ability that your machines have developed and there are going to be numerous numerous companies that will be created on top of this ability and the best time to learn and experiment and maybe even like create products and companies is in college the vision that we run after is that we want to create a stanford out of india and why stanford stanford was the birthplace of of a lot of large companies that you see in the world today Hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, what I'll do is um I I want to talk about bunch of things, but uh before I begin, I want to ask you a few questions, quizzes if you will. Um Which company do you think is the largest hospitality company? Hospitality companies are the companies that run hotels where you go and stay, right? So, which company in the world Somebody said Oyo. What is the other answer? Airbnb. Any other answer? <laughs> so, 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 so. Uh, the largest hospitality company in the world is Airbnb, which is valued at eighty-three billion dollars. That is more than the next three hospitality com- companies combined. So, all your Hilton, Marriott, Taj. If you combine all of them, even then, it is more than. the next three companies on the list okay let me ask you another question which is the most valuable car making company in the world Volkswagen there's one answer which is Volkswagen the other one is Tesla okay the right answer is Tesla Tesla also a single company built in the last 15 years is more valuable than the next 3 4 car companies combined and car industry is more than 100 years old ford was the first car manufacturing company they manufactured the first car in early 1900 so it's been around for more than 120 years um now why am i asking these questions to you i'm asking these questions to you because i want to show you a pattern in fact let me ask you another question and this question is very close to bhavik's heart which company do you think is the largest cab company in the world <laughs> uber uber is the largest cab company in the world it's a company that existed only for the last 10 12 years and yet has overtaken a market all around the world which has existed again for hundreds of years right what does that tell you what is the pattern that you see in these questions all of these companies are built on top of tech and why am i again telling you this because tech is a super power anybody can build tech all you need is a laptop all of you have a laptop okay now what that means is that what you're going to be doing here for the next 4 years is basically learning a super power a super power which enables you to disrupt anything in the world and build companies which will probably disrupt any existing business that has existed like a legacy that is the power of tech i mean there is one thing which is um, acha how many of you know what is a zero sum game sir if one person wins the other person loses yes yes so zero sum game is any game where the total sum of points is zero So for example when you play a football let's say there are two teams that play football if one team wins then the other team has to lose plus 1 minus 1 zero okay all games usually are zero sum games right um very similarly in life there are certain games which you would call as zero sum games for example uh there are fields where there are limited number of jobs all of you would have seen these movie 12 field 12 field was the movie right 
Yeah. Uh, so the, that movie was about a UPSC. Now UPSC has limited number of positions. There are only X number of IAS officers that get created, which means if there are a lot of people competing, then while there are 25 people that win, there are others who lose. It's a zero sum game. I have to beat somebody else to actually win. Tech is not like that. It is possible all of you here will succeed and make it big in life. In fact, if you make it big in life, you'll go and create more jobs for others. Right? So it's not a zero sum game. And that's again another superpower. It's a brilliant superpower that if you succeed with you, the country as well as the society also succeeds. Right? So first thing is, what you're going to be learning here for the next four years is a responsibility that you're learning a superpower. So please see it from that angle. You have this massive opportunity to learn. Why am I saying this? Because while it feels so intuitive, yet under pressure, the first thing people resort to is cheating. If you cheat, then you don't learn. Right? If you go from the mindset of, I will learn, and then we'll see what happens in the exam. That's the mindset that we want. So that's part one. Clear, everyone? You're learning a superpower. So make sure you learn, you build the ability. That's the most important part. Okay? Now, second thing, something very, very unique is happening in the field of tech. Till now, machines were able to solve deterministic problems, which means if I say, hey, machine, do X, Y, Z, they would do X, Y, Z exactly as I would instruct them. For example, Airbnb would say, hey, here is the list of all hotels that I have. I will show you those hotels. You tell me which hotel to book. I will go to that page. And then you pay and then like the pages booked, right? So it does things which are deterministic. Very recently, we have made leaps and advances in AI. And what that means is, now the same computers that you have, they can also take decisions. They can start doing things which are non-deterministic. Machines have started to behave like human beings. And why is that? I mean, while that is very scary, it is also very exciting. It opens up more avenues for you. In fact, if you go and talk to anybody who is a leader in tech, they will tell you that what is happening today is the same as what was happening back in 2000. Back in 2000, the internet revolution happened. And what that led to was there were a lot of really large companies like Google, Facebook that were created in that, in that era. That era is repeating again right now. Because now you have this new ability that your machines have developed. And there are going to be numerous, numerous companies that will be created on top of this ability. And the best time to learn and experiment and maybe even like create products and companies is in college. You guys have that, have that chance to maybe learn and then put it to use and maybe hopefully we get to see a Google come out of here. Right? So hence, repeating again, what you're learning is a superpower. Make sure you focus on learning. If you do that well, you will go and do wonders in the world. Clear, everyone? Yes? Okay. Second thing. Um, and now I'll come more to the scalar aspect of things. Why did we create this scalar school of technology? Um, I mean, sure, there is curriculum, there is that differentiation. I'm sure like all of you have gone through the videos where we talk about uh, <laughs> a bunch of stuff, which is how we're different. But eventually, what is the goal? The goal or the success metric for, for the entire team here, the vision that we run after, is that we want to create a Stanford out of India. And why Stanford? Stanford was the birthplace of, of a lot of large companies that you see in the world today. That is where, that was the cradle of innovation. And then that's what we want to see coming from this set of students that are sitting in front of us. So we will push you. We will push you, which means please don't expect the environment here to be um, relaxed. We, we, I mean, we are, I mean, the environment here, in fact, like if you talk to your seniors, they will, they will probably tell you the environment here is going to be rigorous. And that's because like creating Sanford is not easy. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of commitment. 
to create the next Stanford. And all of you are at the, in fact, like, we can only do so much. All of you are going to be finally the creators of that Stanford. Are you also aligned on the vision that we need to create a Stanford out of India? Yes, sir. Can I get a louder yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Awesome. Um, great. So now before I hand it over, um, I just want to also mention a few learnings that I have had, which given all of you are starting a new session, uh, some of those learnings hopefully you take forward and it helps you um, succeed in the next four years that you have. The first learning that I had, and I'm, I'm talking more of from a point of view of uh, if where what are the learnings that I had when I finished my class 12th and started my college? What are the differences I noticed and what are the things that actually helped me succeed? Um, look, I mean, my background is that I came from a very small city. I'm sure some of you also have come from a very small city, right? Um, and when I joined college, the only thing that I had done was there was a syllabus in school. I, I mean, I, I like most students was the kind of student who would make sure that I have studied everything that was in the syllabus and I've scored good marks in school and somehow ended up in a good college. Um, however, like when you come to college, there are a couple of things that happen. First thing is, this is the first time in your life when you have a lot of independence and freedom. I mean, today, I'm sure like some of your parents might be here, but like they will go away and then you'll be living with each other. Um, now that independence and freedom, basically, a lot of people react very differently to it. There's some people who take it as a responsibility. That yes, this is the first time I have freedom, um, but that it doesn't mean that I have to misuse that freedom. And there are some people who can't take it. They just uh, go bonkers. First time you're free, now let me try everything in life. Uh, sure, please try, but please make sure that you see it as a responsibility, that this is the first phase of your life where it, you are turning into an adult. You're learning how to live life. We are here today to guide you, but we will not be there to guide you maybe four years, five years, six years down the line, right? So it's a responsibility. The first thing is how you treat this freedom, how responsible you are, is going to decide how successful you are in the next four years. That's the learning number one. Your freedom that you've just gotten, it's a responsibility. Is that also clear? The freedom that you have is a responsibility. I understand a lot of you might have had very strict parents. But that doesn't mean that you just break free and like start doing random things in college on day one. Make sense? Second thing, the, the most important part of an institute is the ecosystem that it provides. Which means, the, you will notice that while yes, curriculum matters, teachers matter, but you are going to learn the most from people who are around you. People who are your peers, people who you get to meet on a day-to-day -day basis. Why again I'm telling you this, I also notice in my batch and I've also noticed in your senior batch, People who sort of live in silos, people who become loners, they tend, they tend to struggle during the program because you can't ask for help. Asking for help is the first skill that you'll need to develop in life. Be resourceful. It's okay to ask for help. Everybody struggles. And by the way, the other side, people who are helping others, they also learn in the process. It is said that the best way to learn a subject is by teaching it to somebody else. You can't teach a concept to somebody else unless you understand it really, really well. The best way to learn coding is by debugging somebody else's code. Okay? So, the second thing that you have to learn is how to ask for help. How to be resourceful. For example, today you will have two very renowned tech leaders who people die to meet coming and addressing this session. One happens to be the CTO of Hotstar and CTO of Geo Cinema, and the other happens to be um, the CTO of Flipkart and now founder of Uran. Again, not a lot of you know, a lot of people used to join Uran just so that they could get to work with Amut. They would just spend time, like they would stay till midnight in the office so that they get to learn from Amut, like just go and ask questions to them. You get first-hand access to him. 
He in fact is going to teach a course here as well later on. Use that. Not a lot of people in this country have that have that kind of resources. So second thing that you have to learn in life is how to be resourceful. How to ask for help. Is that also clear? Acha, maybe let me ask another question. Can you raise hands and show me if you at least are friends already with at least one person in this group? Okay, let me ask you the other way out. How many don't have at least even one person in this group that you know and are friends with? It is possible you just got here. That might be another reason. Okay, that's great to see. I know some of you are lying, but that's okay. <laughs> um, and, and, and finally, finally, the last thing that, that is important is till now, there might be some of you who were driven to get good marks because parents were saying so, somebody else was saying so, I have to prove it to my parents. This is going to be the stage of your life where you have to take ownership for yourself. The more you feel responsible, the more you are an owner, the better you will do in life. What I mean by that is, um, the mindset that, oh wait, class mein to bas yahi padhaya tha, is not going to work here. The way tech works is, yes, classes are a great way to get started, but then you should be open to going and exploring outside of the classroom as well. You will do 50% in the classroom. But 50% learning or maybe even more happens outside of the classroom. And that comes from ownership, saying that if I truly want to learn, yes, I will go and figure it out. I am not going to say, blame the person, hey, look, you did not cover this, you did not cover that, etc. I said, oh, wait, the company is asking me that question, but ye to padhaya nahi tha. the world does it, is not going to operate in that fashion, right? So the final advice that I have is, Experiment, explore, but you are the owner. You are going to be responsible. The more you feel responsible, the more you take ownership, the better you're going to do in life. And I mean, to be very honest, there are some of you who have already shown signs that you have taken large ownership in life. Nobody asked you to, but you have gone, gone and did things outside of your school curriculum and actually did very well there. Those are great signs because people who do that, they usually end up succeeding in life. That is, the more and more you do that, which is like nobody's asking me to go and learn something, but I want to because I'm very interested. The more you do that, the better you're going to do in life. <laughs>